Hi everybody, I'm Bob Kovacs and this is an introduction to Corel Video Studio editing software. Video Studio is a full functioning editing package that allows you to do any sort of audio video editing you need to do to make a final video that you might upload to YouTube or Vimeo or other streaming site. It has pretty much all the same tools that all the other editing software packages have, only it's maybe a little more friendly to get started with. Still, any video editing package is pretty daunting when you look at the screen. So what I'm going to do initially is show you what parts of the Video Studio user interface are used for what uh, actual function. And then I'm going to get into showing you a couple of very simple editing functions so you can start editing right away. So this will be just the barest introduction. Let's get started. If you just loaded the software and boot it up, you'll be faced with this welcome screen. You can look at some of the things on this screen, but if you want to get started, what you need to do is click on the Edit tab at the upper center of the screen. Click on the Edit tab and that'll take you to the Edit interface. This is what the Edit interface looks like. Let's take a tour around it. On the upper right is the Library. This is where your files go, the files that you will be editing. The videos, the audios, the photos, whatever you're editing from, they go in the Library. On the upper left is the monitor. That's used to play back your raw clips as well as play back your finished video when you assemble all the clips together on the timeline. Ah, the timeline. That's where all the action happens. It's the entire bottom of the screen and it's got tracks for video, audio, titles, and everything you're going to be using in your final video. Looking more closely at the timeline, the top track is the main video track. Beneath that is the overlay track, and you can have many overlay tracks, so don't worry if you see only one. Beneath that is the title track. That's ostensibly where titles go, but you can use titles in a number of different places. Below the title track is the audio track labeled Voice, and below that is the audio track labeled Music. I can tell you that the music and voice tracks are completely interchangeable. You can put voice on the music track, and music on the voice track. They both work exactly the same way. Slotted between the monitor and the library are the function buttons. You'll be toggling between these to do various things during your editing. Here's what they do. The top button is the media button. It shows the library files and it's where you want to be usually for editing. The second button down is the instant project button. I don't use it at all so I'm going to jump right over it. The third button down is transitions. That's where you do fades, crossfades, digital wipes, and that sort of thing. The fourth button down is the title button. We won't be doing any titles in this video, but it's an important tool for future videos. Next below that is the graphic button. That's where you have colored backgrounds and various types of graphic backgrounds. It's kind of an interesting place, so check it out and see if there's any backgrounds that you might want to use. Below that, the FX button is the effects. It's called filter, but it's for digital effects, so you can change the colors on your screen and do various things like that. The bottom button is the path button, so you can make things move around the screen in an orderly way. And now we're ready to start editing. The first thing that we're going to do is to create a new folder to put the files in that we will be editing. This isn't absolutely necessary, but the folders that are already here have a lot of things in them already. So if you create a new folder, it's a blank slate, you put your files in it, and then you can find only the files that you need to work with. Click on the plus sign, then type a name for the folder. I'm calling this one Birdbath Video. Next, go up to the File menu and select Insert Media File to Library. Select Insert Video. Then navigate to the folder where the videos are and select the videos you want to edit. Finally, click Open. That populates the library with the videos you just selected. You can click on any of the videos in the library and play it using the Play button under the monitor. The little white triangle that moves is called the Playhead. Select a clip that you want to edit and play it. You can move the playhead back and forth to find the points where you want to trim the clip.
Once you find where you want a clip to start, drag the yellow triangle to the start point. Wherever you leave the yellow triangle becomes the start point for that clip. Another way to set the start point for a clip is to click on the left bracket icon at the lower right of the monitor. Then repeat the process to set the stop point, or out point, for the clip. Use the yellow triangle on the right, or the right bracket icon, to set the out point. With the start and stop point set, drag the clip down to the main video track on the timeline. To the left of the monitor's play button are the words project and clip. Use these to toggle between playing back one clip or the entire project. The button just to the right of the play button is the rewind button. It will take you to the beginning of the project or to the beginning of the clip, depending on which of those two words are blue. Let's pick a second clip to edit into the video. Play the clip to see what's in it using the playhead to find the right spot. Set the start point using either the yellow triangle or the left bracket icon. Then find the clip's out point and set it. Let's add one more clip. It's always a good idea to play a clip so that you're sure you know what's on it. As with the others, adjust the start and stop points using the controls by the monitor. As before, when the in and out points are set, drag the clip down to the timeline. Once it is on the timeline, play the clip and the entire video to be sure it looks right. You can drag the playhead back and forth on the timeline as a final check. It's important that you save your work often, as all video editing software is complex and will occasionally crash. In fact, we should have saved before now. To save, go to the File menu and select Save As. Type in the name of the file, in this case, Birdbath Video, and the date. I always like to add the date. Navigate to the folder where you want to save this edit data file. This is not the final edited video. This is a file that contains all your edit data. Click the Save button. Now that your video is edited and saved, it's time to render it into a playable video. To do this, click on the Share tab at the top of the screen. You want to select the MPEG-4 option on the upper right then drop down a list of file formats. There are a lot of choices here, but I suggest starting with the 1920 by 1080 30p 15 megabit selection. You may have to type in the name you want your final video to be called and navigate to the folder where you want the video saved. I'm going to add a 1 to this video just so it's not confused with something else. Click Save, then click on Start. You'll get a progress bar showing the status of your render, and a box pops up saying the render is complete. The only thing to do now is play back the video to be sure it looks right. And here it is. And that's just the barest minimum you're going to need to know to get started with Corel Video Studio. In future videos, I'll show you more advanced techniques, like how to use transitions, how to put titles on the screen, how to fade your audio in and out, how to maybe bring in some background music and use some background music. So keep an eye open for those other videos. But right now, this is what you need to know just to get started. Hey everybody, I'm Bob Kovacs. Thanks for watching.